Don't get me wrong, I love LifeX, I love Philips Hue, I have LifeX Z strips on my desk, I have Philips Hue bulbs in the living room, and they've been the single most reliable bulb I ever used. But at that price, boy, I bet you hear somebody in the past say, hey, cheaper is not always better, but what if it is? Hmm, might be saving some money after this video. Cheaper? Might be better. We're gonna try to use everything we have in this box to create a custom LED strip that we could use on the bottom of these covers right here, so you'll have some nice underglow. Now we get started. I don't even know why I do it. I just follow in a bunch of tutorials here, so all they could feel free to follow along with me. I'll leave everything below in the description. Now we get started. So the thing is, if you're about to use this as one long continuous strip, you're definitely not gonna need as much things as I have here right now. But I wanna cut them up and make sure they fit under the covers exact now, boys. So I definitely needed a few more things. First things first, power supply. You need this one, not optional. Hey, hey, hey. A 20 pack of these connectors to connect the strip to the wires. I, I, I guess it's optional. I like the skin on my fingers. I don't want to burn them off trying to solder this, but I guess it's up to you. I, uh, uh, uh. The strip itself, the SK68, well, don't worry about the name, everything in the description. I personally went with it, although it's a little more expensive than the others because it have an individual LED for the white colors, which is something I needed because it's in the kitchen. I really want the whites to be white and accurate now, boy. But I'll leave the both options in the description don't worry and it's actually coming a roll of five meters so more than likely you're gonna have some extra leftover for our next project hopefully this little thing you have a long name again esp8266 you don't need to know what that mean you just need to know that it's very cheap one of these is somewhere between five to seven dollars and it's gonna be the brains of the entire operation and finally some wire to wire up the whole thing now listen to me do burn down your house i personally went with this 22 gauge wire I, it worked for me i have zero issues no complaints and especially because it come in this roller white i'll just leave past me to explain why the kitchen white so you can be a little lazy with the wire management if it white nice when i move out my parents place i buy this measuring tape because it seemed like a pretty material thing to do mature cut off the end of the leds just make sure you cut it on one of the actual cut points now that we have the first link of LEDs cut to size, I figure it's a good time to tell you about the directional arrows on the LEDs. However, you decide to cut these up and join the back, you just need to make sure that the arrows remain following the same direction. When you jump in the car, you don't put it in drive to reverse and reverse to drive forward backward. Just make sure to follow in the same direction. Connect the LEDs to the wires with the little clips here. It's real easy to use. Just push the LED in one side, squeeze it very hard, push the wires in the other side, squeeze it very hard. Done. Alright, it's time to put the software on this little chip thing. I, I know it's looking confusing. It, it kinda is, but it also not at the same time. Just, just follow along and you'll be good. Plug it into your computer with a micro USB cable. Open your browser and go to install.wled.me. You'll be greeted with this page right here. Connect. You'll see install WLED come up. Click that right there. Boom. Install. And now it's flashing. You could officially call yourself a nerd now, boy. And that's it. Literally, it done. That was all the steps. Connect it to your Wi-Fi when this box pop up. I know you can't see anything that's going on on my screen, but I promise you that's simple. Now a quick little test we could do to make sure everything working, we can hit this power button right here and you can see this LED turn off, hit the power button again and it's on. Now we just need to connect the rest of the LEDs to this. But before we do that we have three wires, positive, negative and data and Sharpie is going to be my best friend here because I'm using the white wires. I'm just going to put a mark on the positive and a mark on the data and I know that the blank one is the ground. Cut the other end that we're going to connect to the little chip and do the same exact thing. I'll find these little breadboard wire things over here, just call them lying around. I should have mentioned this in the beginning, I'll leave it linked as well but it'll make it real easy to connect things to the chip. Connect the power to the pin label VIN, connect the ground to the pin label GND and connect the data to the pin label D4. Alright, I don't need your judgement right now, I connect it like this just to test everything once it's working I'll secure it properly. Plug it in and boom, life except the whole thing not lighting. Yet, we got we fixing that now. Hit this config button, hit LED preferences, scroll down to where you see LED output and choose the LEDs that you have here. This is where I'll put SK6812, if you choose the other one this is where you'll put it here as well. Right below that you'll see a box label length, take out the default value, put the amount of LEDs on your strip. Yes, you need to count the exact dots on your strip and, and put it in there. I want to hit save if everything went according into plan you should be in a gear if it didn't I, I don't know what to tell you there boy <laughs> now nah, leave a comment I, I, I try my best at this point if you didn't cut the leds you're done you could just use it as is but i about to pop the first segment here and then i'll cut the rest for the rest of the cupboards here the problem though if i just stick this under the cupboards look at how they're looking Agreed. That game is so angry dog, I had to take a break and go and unbox the new sword. <laughs> That's not a sword boy bro, That's actually from the sponsor of this video, Muzata. This is going to allow me to put the LEDs in these little channels, then put the diffuser over it, so it will literally soften the look of the LED and just make it look polished, smooth and just, just good to look at. This is what the LEDs will look like with all the hotspots, like we don't want that, but as I slide on the cover for the diffuser, you can see just how much of a difference it's making. The exact set I have here was a six pack of these U-shaped channels. They made 
made of aluminum. Each one is 3.3 feet in length. It's super good quality. I couldn't recommend it anymore. It's really and truly a game changer for any LED project. And if you happen to be watching this video thinking to yourself, you know what? Maybe I should check it out, you know? Well, Muzata thought ahead. The link below in the description will give you 10% off the normal pricing. So Muzata, I appreciate all your sponsor in this video. If honestly, don't go away because we both know what it will look like without it. First one finish, second one now. Yes, this is literally how I keep account of every LED I was adding to the strip. Honestly, just look how much more of a finished product that looking like horse. Connect it to the first strip, jump into the LED settings, and of course, remove the number that you had before and put the correct number of LEDs that have in the entire strip now. Hit save, and once everything went according to plan, you should be in a gear. If not, <laughs> and just like that, the first half of the kitchen done. It's only take two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch me just ignore the measuring tape I was raving about just the eyeball, this is why I'm here. <laughs> I thought everything was going good until tragedy hit. Alright, so we run into a small problem, boy dog. Um, I thought I could have run this through the cupboard because I thought I had a crack there with a lemon. Push it through and hide it, but not working. So we just gonna run it with the wires visible for now and we'll figure out that wire management thing after. Alright, so right here is where things get a little sticky because under here we don't have much space now. So I need to cut a piece of the diffuser, a short piece, but also measure and make sure I leave space for the clips because they can't fit inside. Hmm, I bet you can ignore the measuring tape this time. I just add in some paint or tape on the actual point I'm going to cut. I, I, I don't know why, I just feel like it will make sense in my head. What happened? Fall in the bin. Don't forget, once we add the LEDs, we need to replace the link with the new number, hit save, and then it'll actually turn on. Slap on the diffuser covers and watch them LED hotspots disappear. And now we just have one final step and we're done. So up until now, we've been powering it through the micro USB port from the laptop, but it's time to wire the power supply in. It's simple and not difficult at all, so remember where you connect the positive and negative and data to the actual LEDs from the chip. You're just going to take the positive and negative from the power supply and splice it into that same positive and negative cable. And you're done. Once the power supply plugged in, you can now remove the micro usb cable and it powered directly from the wall and we have access to a lot more power now so in the settings where you see it saying the maximum current is 850 milliamps we want to change that to 2000 i have a power supply that could do way more but we're just playing it safe for now 2000 hit save and you should see the leds bright now so at the time i edit in this video i've been using the lights for about two to three weeks i have zero complaints zero issues it looks just the same as a LifeX strip, as a Philips Hue strip, maybe even better, maybe even brighter. The whites, super bright, accurate, the colors saturated. And on top of that, as you can see for yourself when I change the colors or turn it on and off, it have a nice smooth fade, which you do get from most other LED strips, which is it's something that's super necessary to me. So I'm just going to stop talking now, we're going to chill, and now you just watch some of the effects that you could do. And you can judge for yourself if it's better than Philips Hue and LifeX for a fraction of the course, to me, 100%.